The periodic table is a fantastic, fantastic thing, but only if you know how to read it properly. In this video, we go over the different groups in the periodic table and what they mean. This beautifully coloured periodic table is because there are lots of different groups, lots of different categories on the periodic table. Group number one are also known as alkali metals. Group number two are the alkali earth metals or alkaline metals. Group 7 are the halogens, and group 8 are the noble gases. The big chunk in the middle are the transition metals. The group right on the far right hand side are group 8 or group 0, these are the noble gases. They have a full outer shell. And because they have a full outer shell, they don't want to gain or lose any electrons which means they are really, really unreactive. And because they are unreactive, they actually have quite a lot of uses. Helium we use in balloons, and they are also used in neon lights, as you can see here in the amazing city of Osaka. Moving over one group to group seven, we have the halogens. We are still in the non-metals. And these are going to go around as diatomic molecules, which means their formula is going to be for chlorine gas, Cl2, fluorine gas, F2, bromine gas, Br2. They're going to go around together in pairs. Because they only want to gain one electron, a nice easy way for them to do that is sharing an electron with something else that is the same. So fluorine here can easily gain an extra electron by sharing it with another fluorine. They are highly reactive because they only want to gain one electron. And the most reactive ones are going to be at the top. Boiling point is going to change as we move down the group. So things are going to have a low boiling point or a low melting point are going to be at the top. High boiling point or high melting point are going to be at the bottom. When they react, they're going to gain an electron. Meaning they're going to form minus one ions. And gaining an electron is a reduction. They are going to react violently and rapidly with group 1 metals because group 1 metals want to lose 1 electrons. For example, sodium, which is a soft grey metal, will react very violently, very readily with chlorine, which is a yellow gas, to form sodium chloride, which is a white powder or salt. A more reactive element will displace a less reactive element. So here we have uh, sodium iodide reactive with bromine. Iodine is here below bromine on the periodic table, so bromine is more reactive. So it will displace um, iodine in the compound, forming sodium bromide and iodine. Whereas if you try and react bromine gas with sodium chloride, chlorine is higher than bromine on the periodic table, so it's more reactive. You are going to get no reaction because bromine cannot displace chlorine out of this. These are commonly known as displacement reactions. The halogens are mostly used for sterilising things, for example chlorine, you're commonly going to know that as uh, from your swimming pools. Halogens want to gain one electron, so the most reactive ones are at the top, that's where there's least shielding between the electron they want to gain and the nucleus. Your alkali metals react very violently with water and this is where you're going to see some flames coming from, some different colours coming from. This is one of the things that we use to make the different colours in fireworks. So the lovely, lovely lilac frame from potassium we can use in fireworks. If you've seen these in school, these are soft grey metals which are easily cuttable. They need to be kept in oil so it doesn't react with oxygen or with the water in the air because it's a very, very violent reaction. When the metal reacts with oxygen, we're going to get a metal oxide, which if you've seen these in school, when it was cut, it was shiny, but it still started to dull. The dullness is the metal oxide. The metal plus water is going to form metal hydroxide. 
This gives it its name, it's alkaline metal, because uh, the metal hydroxide is going to be alkaline. You can see that by the change in indicator, if it's what your teacher did. And you will also notice this is a very exothermic reaction. It released a lot of heat, it also released hydrogen gas. That's what the fizzing was. The reactivity is most reactive at the bottom. and least reactive at the top. Things at the bottom are going to have a low melting point or boiling point and a higher melting point or boiling point at the top. Alkali metals want to lose an electron and the ones at the bottom are most reactive because there is more shielding between the, atom that, the electron that they want to use and the positive nucleus in the middle.